Hey everybody, uh, it is Jer. Um, it has been a while. I, I uh, missed you all. Um, life has been, let me fix my hat here. <laughs> life has been good. Um, it's been crazy actually the last year or longer. Has it been longer? I think I did a video at the beginning of the year. Um, I've gone through a lot of transitions. Life has been, like I said, crazy. Anyway, um, back a while back, I said I was going to start doing videos to kind of teach and or give insight. I don't want to say teach, give insight into what I know um, with trading and with investing and business and um, you know, I'm not the smartest person as far as business and trading and investing goes, but I want to share what I do know. Um, and I recently found a uh, company. This hat is wild. Is that better? No. Okay. I see the opposite. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to be able to share, I want to share a recent company that I discovered. Um, of course, it's been discovered before. Other people have found it. And it actually has a decent sized investor base of people that I've actually been talking to. Um, the company is uh, called Waiter. Uh, it's W-A-I-T-R. Um, they are a, as best as most people know, a food delivery app, which there's a lot of, of course. Um, and it's a, a large market. Um, think like Grubhub or DoorDash or Seamless, which I believe was acquired by DoorDash. Um, but think of that, the app is on your iPhone. If you are in a larger city, they probably are not there. Their focus is on medium and small cities and kind of saturating that market um, where, you know, I, I don't think DoorDash and Grubhub have quite made it yet. Um, beyond that though, there's a lot going on. And so if it was just a food delivery service, I would say to me, just being a food delivery service because they have acquired um, two different other food delivery services, which was uh, Delivery Dudes and um, what is the other one? Uh, Bite Squad. Um, they delivered those, or they, they acquired those two, which I feel makes just the food delivery service probably worth, I want to say, me personally, this is a, not financial advice as you can see down here, um, but me personally, my value for it is probably around 300, 400 million dollars um, total in the 900 cities that they are, 900 plus small and medium sized cities that they're in. Um, I would say that the company is worth probably three or 400 million just based on that, just based on their food delivery. Um, so I discovered this company because recently, uh, per SEC filings, um, I went and looked at their filings and recently, uh, Morgan Stanley made a 10% uh, purchase of the company. Morgan Stanley owns 10% of the company now. Or they bought 10%. Their total for uh, the company, from what I'm understanding now, they actually own 15, right around 15% of the total company. Um, so I was like, whoa, why would Morgan Stanley be getting in this like, what has been considered basically a penny stock? Um, why do they believe in this penny stock? And I was like, hmm, I should research more. Um, so I went on a DD. Okay, so in stocks, uh, since we're learning together, DD is due diligence. Like you are doing your research, your own due diligence. Um, so I went in and did some DD. So um, I hope you can see this on this and it isn't blurred for you. Uh, Morgan Stanley, uh, recently as of September, uh, acquired 10% stake in the company. Other stakeholders include Vanguard Group, uh, Jefferies, um, BlackRock and Fidelity. So they have these 
big institutions investing in them, which we call smart money, because these people do their research. These institutions do their research to figure out what is this company worth compared to where it's at now? Where are they going? What's the growth opportunity? So these companies have invested in this. The, I went to go look and I was like, well, okay, great. Institutes are invested, that's strong. I was like, I wonder who their um, single largest investor is. So I looked and it is the founder and owner of Landry's, which is Tillman, uh, for, oh my gosh, I'm gonna mess up his name, Fertilla. I hope I got that right. Fertilla, for, ah, I, <laughs> um, let me pull it up because I don't want to get this wrong because um, it is important. Uh, is uh, The largest in investor is uh, Tillman Fertitta. He owns 7.8% um, with his holding, or by himself. His holding company no, owns another 3.4%. The uh, company is led by CEO uh, Carl Grimstad. Uh, Carl Grimstad was the founder of iPayments, which was later acquired by uh, Paysafe. Um, so the company has experienced leadership, uh, prepared food, alcohol, and grocery delivery expansion. Waiter has acquired two other delivery services, Delivery Dudes and Bite Squad delivery services. Together with Waiter, they now deliver to over 700 small and mid-sized cities. I went and double-checked this, and actually now it actually it is brought up to 900 plus cities, small and medium-sized cities. This is important, and the reason this is important is because a lot of times small and mid-sized cities are looked over or overlooked by these big players who think, ah, we don't care about them. We want the big cities. We want New York. We want LA. We want Boston. We want, you know, and so they go in these, go for these big cities. Whereas waiter along with now uh, Delivery Dudes and Bite Squad, has focused on saturating these smaller, mid-sized markets and getting their name known in these smaller and mid-sized markets and growing out from there. And that's an amazing thing to do. And you may say, well, those are just small towns. Those are just small cities. Those are just medium-sized cities. Look at some, like, other companies that have done this and kind of compare that. Walmart started in Bentonville, Arkansas and gradually just saturated out. They weren't noticed because they started in this small town and gradually just grew out from there. And people thought, oh, Walmart, who cares? It's just some stupid company, whatever. And they didn't pay any attention to Walmart and what Walmart was doing. Walmart, in the meantime, was given time to grow and expand out. And then before you knew it, they were everywhere. Like, they grew from this small town, Bentonville, Arkansas, to other places in the south, and then just grew out and expanded from there, and then kind of gradually got into uh, medium and large cities. So whenever I look at Waiter, I see a lot of the similarities there in how they are saturating that market and becoming known in those areas and then growing out from there. Um, along with that growth, uh, they have recently entered into the uh, financial services space and somewhat the fintech space. Um, in August 2021, they acquired three payment processing companies, Pro Merchant, uh, Cape Cod Merchant Services, and Flow Payments. With these acquisitions, waiters will offer a suite of payment services that include loyalty programs, gift cards, payment processing, and merchant lending. So imagine your mom and pa store, grocery store, retail store, whatever it happens to be, and imagine like Starbucks. Imagine Starbucks, how Starbucks has royalty programs and gift cards and, and this, and this is a big part of their business. Now, with Waiter Holdings, Waiter Holdings is entering into this market to where they can now offer smaller businesses the chance to have actual gift cards and the chance to have actual um, 
uh, loyalty programs where people can earn points and and it, it builds up a returning customer base. Whenever you have gift cards, that customer is going to load up a gift card, put $10 on it, they might spend $7 on this, well they still have $3 left, they're going to need to come back to spend that $3. Whenever they spend that $3, they're gonna to wanna to spend more. Most likely, they're going to reload their gift card to spend more, which is gonna keep them coming back and coming back and coming back. Same thing with loyalty programs. Loyalty programs, if I get stars somewhere, I want to be able to reach my reward. So I'm gonna keep going back, like with Starbucks, I'm gonna keep going back and to reach that reward because I wanna be able to get that free thing, whatever it happens to be, free drink, free food, whatever it is. So this is keeping a customer base. This is building a customer base. In my opinion, Waiter is smart, very smart for doing this because they are going to be able to offer smaller businesses, medium-sized businesses, even other large businesses, their services, their merchant services that will help these businesses enter into loyalty uh, programs and gift cards, which then Waiter gets a percent of. If Waiter is getting a percent of that, their revenue is growing. If their revenue is growing, their investor base is growing, the stock price is going to go up from there. This is my belief. Do your own research, believe what you wanna believe. This is what I believe about that. Um, in 2021, so cannabis, cannabis delivery service, you think, oh, nobody's gonna deliver pot. Nobody's gonna deliver weed. That's not even gonna be a thing. Weed isn't even legal anywhere yet. You know, it's just very slowly becoming legal in the US, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Believe that if that's what you want to believe. I don't believe that. I don't believe that cannabis is done growing. Cannabis is a growth market. There is so much potential for the cannabis growth market. And with that, cannabis delivery. If I am buying cannabis, if I'm buying weed, if I'm buying marijuana, whatever you happen to call it, I don't want to go to the store to do it. I don't. I don't want to have to do it. I don't want to have to be seen doing it. I don't want to have to go to the store to do it. I would rather have it delivered along with my groceries and food, my prepared food, than I would want to have it uh have to go and like get it at the store. I want everything delivered if I can, you know? So I believe Waiter is ridiculously smart here. Um, they are getting ahead of the game with cannabis delivery. You say, oh, well, uh, that's a high risk payment. Nobody's gonna trust this, blah, blah, blah. You know, businesses like, yeah, it's just high risk. I don't want, they won't want to do this. They will. And the reason is, and this is where the acquisition of um, flow payments comes in and how flow payments helps. Uh, in 2021, waiters started taking advantage of their acquisition of flow payments, uh, specializing in high risk payment accounts to enter into the cannabis delivery service market. This has huge growth potential. Cannabis is only just now being tapped, and it's only being tapped in the states where it happens to be legal. Once it becomes legal in other states, and I believe it will be, I believe that it will be legal across the whole U.S. Um, whenever that happens, Waiter, which they're actually going to be changing their name and rebranding uh, sometime in the near future from what I understand, uh, so that it actually meets like all of the stuff that they have going on, Waiter is one step ahead of the game. Like they are ahead of the game by getting ahead and saying, you know what? People are gonna need their weed delivered. Let's do it. Let's go into this and let's do it. So this flow payments actually has always like done uh, high risk payments, dealt in high risk payments, marijuana payments, payments for uh, weed um, is considered high risk. So this is perfect. Perfect. And <laughs> I am just like, wow, how is this company not? Ugh, how are they not where they should be fine? Like, like with stock, like why is this? 
Morgan Stanley is smart for, I'm just going to say, Morgan Stanley is very smart for owning 15% of this company. Um, I believe that uh, Tillman, uh, <laughs> uh, Tillman is very smart for getting in on this company um, and the moves that they're making. And it's just, wow. So if that wasn't enough, <laughs> um, Waiter actually made an investment into uh, this summer. Uh, the summer of 2021, Waiter made an investment into figure technology technologies. Uh, this payment solutions, this is payment solutions using blockchain technology founded by SoFi founder. Um, uh, so blockchain technology goes hand in hand is uh, what crypto is on. With this investment, um, Waiter is a, uh, Plans as a goal to use figure technologies to facilitate alternate payment, think crypto, uh, and disbursement for diners, restaurant partners, and drivers. So with this investment, they will be able to work with figure technology technologies to be able to accept crypto for, for small businesses, medium-sized businesses, even large businesses, and they will be able to pay restaurants in crypto if a restaurant wants to be paid in crypto. So be it. Uh, they'll also be able to pay drivers in crypto if a driver wants to be paid in crypto. So be it. Crypto is, there is no denying at this point that crypto is a part of the future. It may even be the future. Um, with Bitcoin and Ether and uh, even Dogecoin and some of the others, crypto is a growth space. And again, Waiter is seen getting ahead of the competition and getting to where they can accept crypto payments. The investment that they made into um, Focus Technologies, which I think is a great company to invest in, um, and it's not even public yet. Uh, the investment they made, from what I understand, is $15 million. Um, from what I also understand, uh, Waiter Holdings has at least $60 million in cash right now um, that they can use for business and acquisitions and whatever they need to, to be able to do. Um, if that wasn't enough, in uh, May 2021, uh, Waiter Holdings started doing a stadium food delivery service. So you're at a stadium, and they've only, I believe, tried this out in uh, medium-sized cities, again, um, uh, and stadiums in those cities. Uh, but they are trying out doing stadium delivery service to where you go to a stadium, see a baseball game, go to a stadium, see basketball game, whatever, sports game, instead of having to go and wait in line at the concession stand, you're leaving to go, you're taking the time to get there, you're standing in line, who knows how long that's going to take, you are being interrupted from the game, or chancing not making it back before halftime is done, or whatever it happens to be, why not have someone go and get that food for you, go and get those drinks for you? Um, and so Waiter has, again, kind of started trying out something new, something different. Um, yes, I believe that other food delivery services are trying this, but um, Waiter's there with them doing this as well. And doing to your seat delivery of food and drinks and whatever, you know, concession items you want. Um, and again, getting their name out there. People see Waiter at these stadiums and they think, you know what? I used Waiter at the stadium. They were great. Let's order some food. And so they'll order in-home delivery. And again, more growth, more revenue. The investment potential for this company is crazy. To me, not financial advice. To me, it seems crazy. Maybe you see something different. I don't know. Um, so... The ticker symbol is uh, WTRH. Um, on uh, the 15th, 
they closed at 142 a share with a market cap of about 170 million, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. Uh, current price target for me uh, is six to seven fifty, Th and this would put the company at somewhere in the ballpark of six hundred to seven hundred fifty million, and that's with where they're at right now. Right now, in my opinion, that is where they are at right now. This company has so much potential. I believe that getting in, I would buy in me. I would buy in below five dollars. Anything, anything below five dollars is a bargain. Bargain. Buy it, hold it. It's going to fluctuate some. Do not buy it and get scared if it drops some or if it, you know, if it's very volatile because it it has been a penny stock. So you are going to have people who want to short it and people who want to get in, get out, get in, get out. Whatever it happens to be, let them do their thing. My opinion is. Buy it, hold it, leave it. Buy it, hold it, leave it. Um, this thing is, as this is, I feel, the bottom. And so we only go up from here, in my opinion. Um, maybe I'm wrong. But I also feel that there's a potential with this company being, in my opinion, as undervalued as they are, there's a, a, a potential for them to be um, a buyout target. Um, and that's even good news for investors because then you get a percentage or you get, you know, whatever the stock price is that the company that buys them out is paying. If you, however many shares you're at, that's how much you're going to get. And it should be pretty decent if they get bought out. I think that it would be a good deal. Um, so let's cover the, I've covered the positives. Let's cover what you might run into if you're doing your research uh, on the company and be like, ooh, that's a, kind of a red flag. Um, and again, make a decision, make an educated decision, do your own research. Um, this is what I saw whenever I was researching and what I saw short saying and bear saying and my thoughts on that. And again, do your own research, do your own thing. Um, I trust in the company, I'm in. I'm in, um, but maybe you aren't, and that's okay. Um, okay, uh, something I saw was this, this is spiking on news. It's a pump and dump. Um, there is and was news. Uh, Morgan Stanley bought a 10% stake. They now own apparently like 15%. Um, Morgan Stanley is considered smart money. They knew and they know what they are doing. Um, Another thing, just look how much value the company has lost since going public in 2018. You should be scared. Uh, yes, the company has made some mistakes, possibly overpaid for Byte Squad, but they have course corrected and addressed addressed opportunities, including bringing in a new CDO, CEO and other new leadership. Um, it, it's something that needed, that the company needed, and I feel like it was the right move. And in 2020, they became profitable. So, and there's a lot of companies there's a lot of companies, period, that aren't profitable that are trading at 20 times earnings or something like that crazy. So um, they're worthless and they don't make money. Uh, 2022 or 2020 revenue was 204 million. Net income of 15 cents per share. Uh, in comparison, Grub had lost, Grubhub had a loss of 168 a share in 2020. The CEO has scandals and I payment. Um, He's a horrible CEO, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the allegations were false and meritless. He won a settlement, was given an advisor job with I payment. Since coming on with where the company has expanded, become profitable. Uh, the stock is too manipulated. You'll lose everything. So the only way that a stock, if you're in and out trading, you might lose. Like That's so hard to say because whenever you're trading, that can happen. I'm saying that this is an investment opportunity. I'm saying buy in and just hold it. Anything under five, I would have bought in. Anything under five, I would still buy in. Um, so, and I would just hold. But if you're trading, yes, you do have a chance of loss because it is going to go up and down. That's, that's what happens with penny stocks all the time. There are people shorting it. There are people longing it. And you don't know where it will end up in the short term. 
and it could go up, it could go down in the short term. I, I don't have a crystal ball. I wish I did. I don't. Um, the truth is the stock has been shorted to the ground. Uh, in my opinion, with $204 million in revenue, net profits higher than a lot of food delivery services, $60 million in cash on hand, at least from what I understand, um, and a recent move into the new verticals, the stock is bargaining at anything less than $6, um, $6 a share. Uh, my uh, price target is uh, 6 to seven fifty, which would place the uh, company between 600 to $750 million dollars. Um, and long term, I would say the price target is probably twelve to fifteen. I can see the company being worth one to two billion. So, um, and and growing from there. So anything is possible. Um, I just wanted to pass around, pass <laughs> pass along my find, um, and hopefully it helps somebody. Hopefully it helps. Uh, like I said, do your own DD, do your own due diligence, do your own research. Do not invest or trade without doing your own research and finding out what you need to find out before getting in. Um, I plan to be back soon. Uh, I plan on doing some more videos, kind of giving um, tidbits of information about the stock market and uh, trading and investing and what I know. And, you know, if you know something else, add it to the comment section. Um, and I will see it and, and do my own research. And if you see things in the comment section or in any videos I post, please do your own research. Find out the information for yourself. I might be wrong. I am human. Um, but I do believe in this stock and, and waiter and uh, its potential to uh, go up higher uh, than where it's at for sure. Okay. I love you all. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye for now.